Today, I am going to introduce you to a new word, and that word is reentry. Reentry are the processes, resources, and transitions that incarcerated people go through. Very rarely is that a single entity. Remember, 1.8 million incarcerated persons are the parents to 4 million children. So, what does this talk about? This talk is about humanity. This talk is about the marginalization of people right here in the United States. This talk is about the true faces of incarcerated people. This talk is about what we think about them. This talk is about how we feel about them. This talk is about how and what we expect them to do, and then how we don't allow them to do it. Hmm, that sounds like a catch-22. A situation in which a desired outcome or solution is impossible to attain due to inherently illogical rules or conditions that are in place. In other words, it's a setup. Stats and facts. Two million people are incarcerated in the United States. The United States incarcerates more people than any nation in the world. Four million children, as I said, have incarcerated parents. In South Carolina, 28% of the children live in food insecure homes. What does that mean? That means they have no idea where their next meal is coming from. So I say, I wonder how many of them are in the four million I just mentioned. The future number of prison beds are predicated on the failing reading scores of third grade boys. That's how they determine how many more prisons we need to build and how many beds we need. Half a million people in South Carolina don't have a high school diploma or GED. A quarter million of them can't read above a fourth grade level. One in five people in Greenville County is illiterate. New word, recidivism. Hmm, say that 12 times. <laughs> the rate at which re-entering people return to prison. Nationally, 70 to 90 percent of re-entering people are reincarcerated within two years of release to serve a four to six year sentence. Cost to taxpayers, $40,000 per year per inmate. Transportation is the number one obstacle for re-entering people, yet they are usually court ordered to attend three to five programs, very rarely in the same vicinity. 85% um, of incarcerated people lived 200 to 400% below the federal poverty guideline prior to incarceration. You know what that says to me? That says that crime is as much about poverty as it is about character. Now prison, prison is big business. And manufacturing is that business. Right here in South Carolina prisons, we make credenzas, bookcases, desks, office modular systems, golf carts, textile recycling, horticulture, agriculture, right here in South Carolina prisons. The saying is, crime and punishment. I see punishment and profit. The average wage for an incarcerated person, 35 cents per hour. The average workday, 10 to 12 hours per day. Now business is about supply and demand. Now, with a 70 to 90 percent reincarceration rate, I'd say the employee supply side is working rather nicely. I don't know about you. I wouldn't brag about that, though. The number one conviction nationally is a drug conviction. And drug convictions are the only conviction that renders a re-entering person ineligible for federal 
financial aid, thereby obliterating college as a life option. Employment. Most employers have a blanket exclusion policy for ex-felons. So, no legitimate work for you, ma'am, and no legitimate work for you, sir. This marginalization and discrimination caused the EEOC to file a class action suit for ex-felons. And in June of 2012, guess what happened? They won. It is now illegal to blanketly exclude a person from an employment opportunity based solely on their criminal history. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's wise to give a former bank robber a job as a bank teller. <laughs> But I do think that we can agree that they probably could work on an assembly line, probably run a machine, maybe even drive a forklift. We should all agree, though, that they should be able to make an honest living. So now that they're not blanketly excluded, what is the policy? Well, in most cases, we would like you to be arrest and conviction-free for 10 years. Hmm, what does that look like? Well, the dumb, stupid thing that I did when I was 19 now affects me at 29 while I'm trying to get a job to feed my wife and my two kids. So again, it's not a blanket exclusion. It may be even a step forward, but I wouldn't brag about that. In many states, re-entering persons are marginalized, disenfranchised, prevented from voting, prevented from living in public housing, discriminated against in hiring practices, excluded from juries, and denied educational opportunities. Poor families can't have their husband, wives, sons, brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, aunts return to them because they live in public housing and they would lose that benefit. We in the United States have families that are separated because of a legal status. But what do we want? Rehabilitation. Really? How? How do we expect re-entering people to be successful with the stats and facts that I just gave you? I don't know, sounds like something familiar. A catch-22. A situation in which a desired outcome is impossible to attain due to inherently illogical rules or conditions that are placed in place. We have to stop looking at re-entry as the criminal. We have to stop looking at re-entry as that's the crime. And we have to look at re-entry as real people with real families and real needs. Who are these people? What do they look like? They look like me. They look like you. And so if we know who they are and what they are, why can we only see what they've done? Why are we hell-bent on making them pay for the rest of their lives? Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Okay. They did the time. But it isn't enough, is it? We want more. We want them to pay for the rest of their lives. We want to hold them hostage to their history. We set the price. They paid the price, but we are bouncing the check. It's time for us to do our work. It's time for us to invest in human potential and provide true second chances. But before we can do the work, we have to know what the work is. Number one, cease and desist the apathy towards reentering families. Know that we're making laws and legislation that is preventing people from being together and increasing their livelihood and having quality lives. Forgiveness. We've got to forgive. They've done their time. Their time is their apology. Their time is their sorry. We've got to accept that and allow them to move on. Let's believe in human potential. Let's believe that people are more than what they've done, that they can be anything they put their minds to. 
and let's release the judgment. Look to your left and look to your right. No, really, look to your left and look to your right. One of the persons sitting next to you did something really, really dumb when they were young. The difference is they were just fortunate enough for it to go unnoticed. Second, advocate. Have a conversation. Start the conversation. Let people know about re-entering people and their struggle. Let people know to cease and desist the apathy, to forgive, to open doors, and to help. And second, so hope. So hope so that you see a re-entering person, let them know I believe in you. Volunteer with an organization that works with re-entering people. Let them know that we know you can be more than what you've done. Effective reentry is ultimately all of our responsibility. Per Chauncey Beatty, and you heard her this morning, our prisons are the debt in the death of our social kinships. We stand in the margins. I add, when we don't forgive and allow the opportunity to retrain, reclaim, and renew the, what was lost through poverty and through bad decision-making, we are a part of the problem and not the solution. True second chances reunite families, develop human potential, open doors for employment and educational opportunities. We have to stop thinking, our, thinking people are what they've done and believe in what they can be. I ask you a question. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. But so are you and you and you. I ask you, if that was me, could this not be me?